Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're gonna have a look at an MS-DOS email client and maybe a Windows 3.11 one as well. In any event, in past videos, we've done a couple of things. In one video, we set things up so that we could access an email client from the Tandy 1000 over Telnet. In another video, we set up an email server that allows us to access email from legacy email clients using Gmail. Well, today we're going to show you how to access email using Minuet, a DOS email client. But rather than show you here in the Tandy, we're going to kick it over to Virtual Chris, who will take us through the procedure on how to set up and use Minuet. So, Virtual Chris, Take it away. Configuring Minuet for MS-DOS. Let's get started. First of all, as always, the procedure that you see here on the right side of the screen is available in my Git repository because, well, I like you guys. And hopefully you can follow along and repeat what you see here and also have a nice setup. All right. Let's talk about the preconditions. First of all, you need to have executed my email bridge procedure, which will set up several mailing application pieces on your Raspberry Pi. So if you haven't executed that procedure, you'll want to go ahead and pause the video at this point and perform that procedure. I'll put a link in the corner for ease of finding that video. Okay. As for the second precondition, I want you to be aware that Minuet does not have a concept of leave messages on server. So running Minuet is going to download all messages locally that you have on your Dovecot server running on your Raspberry Pi. So if you followed other parts of my procedure and configured Dovecot to serve, say, an IMAP client, those messages are going to disappear when you run Minuet. And certainly there are configurations to overcome this, but we won't be covering those today. Configuring Dovecot to support POP3. Let's get started. So the steps that we see here are going to be performed on the Raspberry Pi. Let's go ahead and get a shell session to our Raspberry Pi using SSH. All right. And the first thing we need to do is install POP3 support by doing this sudo apt-get install command. In my case, I already have dovecot POP3D installed, so no change. But for you, you should see the module install. Next, we need to configure the dovecot configuration. So let's go ahead and edit it. And we're going to scroll down and find the line that starts with protocols which currently says IMAP, and add a POP3 to the end. From there, we can save and exit, and then we can restart Dovecot. And just for good measure, let's check the status to make sure that Dovecot is happy. And now we can see that it is running IMAP and POP3 as we look at the status. Perfect. That's it. So with the Raspberry Pi configured, it's now time to configure Minuet for DOS. Before proceeding with that, we need to create a floppy disk with the needed installers for setup. So go ahead and download the three files that you see listed here, which include the packet driver for DOS for the AMD network card that is used by VirtualBox, the cute mouse mouse driver or some other mouse drivers, fine, and the Minuet installer. And I've already downloaded these, so I'm going to proceed to the next step, which is using WinImage to create a floppy disk image. For that, we can go within WinImage to File New, 1.44 megabyte, click OK. Then go Image Inject, and we're going to inject the three files that you see here starting with the packet driver. 
then image inject navigate to the cute mouse directory or your mouse driver and find the mouse driver and then finally for the minuet installer image inject and we'll inject menuarc.exe perfect now we can go file save as go to the desktop or wherever you'd like and change the type to be IMA and save the file. We'll just call it Minuet. Great. At this point, we can exit WinImage. So let's go ahead and configure that MS-DOS virtual machine. And for this step, I highly recommend downloading the DOS 6.22 boot ISO from allbootdisks.com. And you can see a link here. Okay, let's go ahead and launch VirtualBox. Let's create a new VM. We'll call it Minuet. The type should be other, which should select DOS. Next, 16 megabytes of memory is plenty. Next, as far as the hard disk, we'll go ahead and choose create a virtual hard disk now. Create. Hard disk file type, I like to go with VMDK in case I want to use, say, WinImage to add files to it later. Next. Dynamically allocated is fine. Next. The defaults here are fine, so we'll click Create. And there we have it. Next, we need to change a network setting. So with the virtual machine selected, I'll click on the Settings wheel. We'll go to Network and change the network adapter to be bridged. And also choose your network card, whatever network card is active in your system. In my case, it's a wireless card, so I'll choose that and click OK. Perfect. With this, we're ready to start the VM, so I'll click the green arrow. And we'll be prompted to choose a startup disk. I'll choose my DOS 622 boot disk and then click start. All right, let me make this bigger so you can see it. And I did hold down the shift key as this booted so that I didn't have to um, go ahead and let it wait to load the CD-ROM driver since we don't need them. Anyway, at this point we can type F disk and one to create a DOS partition or logical drive, one to create a primary partition, and Y to set the max size and make it active. Press enter, then the any key to reboot. I'll hold down the shift key again to bypass config sys and auto exec bat. At this point, we can go ahead and format drive C by doing a format C colon backslash S, Y to confirm, and then enter when complete. Great. Our disk is now ready for some installation fun. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put the floppy disk into the drive. This is the minuet disk that we created earlier. And we'll change to drive B just to make sure it's there. And indeed it is. So we can go ahead and make a directory on drive C called minuet and copy the minuet installer to that directory, as well as copy the mouse driver to drive C, root directory, and the packet driver to the root of drive C as well. And it helps if you spell it right. That's better. Next up, I'm going to edit an auto exec bat file on drive C, and this will be a new file. And we're going to add a line to initialize the packet driver, as well as a line to call the mouse driver. And we can save and exit. At this point, we can eject the boot disk and the optical disk from the drive and restart the virtual machine. Perfect. 
we can see the packet driver has loaded and the mouse driver has loaded. So next, let's go ahead and change into the Minuet directory and type Minuarc, and that will unarchive it. And at this point, we're ready to run Minuet. So using the mouse, we can go to Setup and Network and put in a unused IP address on your network, as well as your network's netmask, and also the IP address of your gateway server which is typically your router, as well as a name server, which isn't strictly required, but we'll go ahead and put in our router for that as well. You can put your DNS server in here. And from there, we can click test. Looks like everything was successful. So we can go ahead and click done and then okay. Great. So at this point, we can go set up and then user and put in our email address, which is going to be the Pi user at ChatPi in our case. Also put in the password for the Pi user, as well as a reply to address, which is going to be your email address. Your full name. And for the mail subdirectory, I just put mail. From here, we can click OK. And next, we can set up our servers by going to Setup, Servers. Just change the mail port to 110 and then click OK. At this point, we should be all set up. So we can go ahead and hit the Escape key to bring us back to the main page here, and then F2 for the viewer and F3 to fetch. And lo and behold, we can see all of our messages have been downloaded. There you have it. Very cool. And at this point, we can hit escape to go back to the main page. And then F3 to compose a message. And we can fill in the to address. As well as a subject and a body. And press F4 to send. From there, I'm going to go back and see if we can fetch that message after a minute or two. So we'll go back to the viewer and hit F3 to fetch. And it may take a little while for it to propagate through since we are using Dovecot with a delay. Eventually, we'll see that a new message pops into the inbox. Excellent. So with that, Minuet is configured. I'm just going to go ahead and say file and exit to leave it. And that's it. All right, let's go ahead and launch Communicator. And we'll click Next to create a new profile. We'll put our full name in there and our email address. Next. For the profile name, that's fine. Next. Now we're going to need to change the outgoing mail server here to be ChatPy. Next. Username will be pi, incoming mail server will be chat pi, and we will change it to IMAP, next, and then finish. From there, we can click the mailbox icon. And put in our password for the Raspberry Pi. And there we have a message. Perfect. If we want to send a new message, we can do that as well. And sometime later, if we go to check for messages, we'll see there it is. Excellent. Thank you, Virtual Chris. As always, appreciate the assist. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video today. There's a lot more content on the way. 
definitely subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell and you'll be notified when that new content is available. And if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Otherwise, let me know what you thought of it. If you didn't like it, that's fine too. In any event, I've got some emails to write, so I'm going to let you go for now. But as always, it's been great having you along for the journey, and we'll see you next time. Bye.